Fears of radiation exposure in the United States that were stirred anew today. The FDA reported higher than normal levels of radioactive iodine-131 in milk samples from California and Washington. Now, those levels, however, were tiny, far less than what we're exposed to naturally every day, and they're still deemed safe. They're 5,000 times below the danger threshold, okay? But the contamination around Japan's stricken nuclear plant is very dangerous indeed. Radioactive iodine there is now 10,000 times the permissible limit. Here's David Wright. Today, more bad news from the reactor. Radiation levels rose dramatically. Radioactive iodine is now at 10,000 times the permissible limit. Radioactive cesium, 500 times what's allowed. Both isotopes increase the risk of cancer, and cesium lingers for 30 years. This sign says off limits, but it's not like there's anyone here to object. 20 kilometers out from the plant, the radiation levels are too toxic for manned checkpoints. So this Japanese camera crew simply drives on past. Everyone was ordered to evacuate nearly three weeks ago at the first sign of trouble. They left in a hurry. Trains just stopped dead on the tracks. Family pets left behind are eager for their masters to come home. At a bus stop, the poster for a political campaign, it says the countryside is the place of new beginnings. The candidate and the voters are gone. Just 12 miles away, hundreds of workers are still struggling valiantly to tame the reactors, and the pressure is taking its toll. In email messages published by the Wall Street Journal, several of them explain that the reactor is just one of their worries. There were many workers whose houses were washed away, reads one email. My entire hometown was washed away by the tsunami. My parents were washed away by the tsunami, and I don't know where they are. Everyone has lost everything, their home, their job, their school, their friends, their families. Who could stand for this reality? <laughs> this may be the next generation of frontline workers at the reactor, a robot called Helios 9. Is it time to bring in the robots? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, Dr. Hiroshi Shigeo, a robotics expert at Tokyo Institute of Technology, has plenty of options to choose from. These are the snake uh, like robot. He has robots that jump, crawl, and shimmy. I can totally see the logic of it, mm. but at the same time I wonder, have I seen too many movies? He says the main way these robots can help is reconnaissance and radiation monitoring. Of course it's very difficult and uh, it doesn't work just like uh, science fiction. Obviously for the tough jobs, there's no substitute for human skill and bravery. These men are members of the Tokyo Fire Department's elite hyper-rescue squad, among the first responders at the reactor. Their commander explains it was their job to drag a hose more than a half a mile from the sea to the reactor. He says there were places we had to crawl through bits of rubble where it was only wide enough for one man. I'd imagine you couldn't stay in there very long. Only half an hour, he says, because the radiation was so intense. I don't want to ask you to wade into politics, but I, I wonder, were these guys playing with fire at that reactor? It's a, it's a complicated question. Yes, he says. From a risk management perspective, if they had taken certain precautions, I wouldn't have had to put my men in harm's way. The firemen volunteered. The people living near the reactor had no choice. Not everyone left. A few ignored the evacuation order. This man's a rice farmer. Despite the danger, he refuses to leave his home in the evacuation zone. We have plenty to eat, he says. We're self-sufficient. We grow it all ourselves. Never mind that the government has banned agricultural products from this region. The produce and the dairy farmed here considered unsafe for human consumption. This old man is 94. I was in the war, he says, so I understand. He says this is worse than World War II. Wars you can survive, but this stuff is different. There's no escaping it. It spreads with the wind and could end up killing everyone in Japan. This week a Tokyo newspaper reported that an organic farmer here hanged himself. The tsunami had wiped out his farm and his warehouse. Then the reactor poisoned his soil. He saw no way to cultivate a future in this 
Wasteland. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Tokyo.